Hi, and welcome to this video, which is um, an advanced tutorial for Cube Explorer. Now, if you haven't already seen the introduction to Cube Explorer, I suggest that you go and watch that first. That's on the Cubing World channel, and there's a link here and in the description. So now that you know the basic functions of Cube Explorer, there are ways to make it um, do more things. So you should know now how to for example, set up a uperm and then generate a list of algs for it. Okay, now we have all the uperms that are 11 moves or less. Now there's quite a lot of these and rather than looking through each one individually trying to find out which algorithm is the best one, for example, you might be able to think of a uh, reduce the move set that's allowed and that will help you find better algorithms. For example, B moves are generally not considered very fast. Likewise, you might be very right-handed dominant and not want to do any L moves. So we tick these boxes in the faces to exclude. Now when you go out of the window and press add and solve again, it won't allow you to do those moves. So now we have much nicer algorithms. As you can see, the standard algorithm for the uperm is still there. You can also allow it to do slice moves. So now when we allow slice moves, we should be able to see some standard uperms here. M2U, MU2, M'U, M2, another standard algorithm. So this is a way that you can filter your algorithms and give you less algorithms to search through manually in order to find a good one. Now what if you don't want to solve an entire cube? Let's say that you want to find an OLL. So let's pretend that we're going to find algorithms for the easy six move OLL. Now to set this up we don't want to paint the permutation of the pieces because we don't care where the pieces end up. All we want to do is orient the last layer. And to do this, you can use the control and left click. So press control and then left click. Now the piece you want to put this marker on, the marker looks like this, with a white diagonal stripe. The piece that you want to put that on will be where the, co where the color of your U face or your D face is. That's for corners. So we'll grey out the other two, and likewise put one there, and on the top. And this is what the corners look like for the six mover froth. And the edges, we want these four. And this is what your OLR looks like. Now the piece you want to put the marker on for the edges is again the sticker that belongs on the U or the D face. If there is no sticker that belongs on the U or the D face, let's say for example you're looking for F2 LLs and you want to put the marker on the sticker that belongs on F or B. Okay, now we've done that we can press add and solve and we should get a list of ways of doing this OLL. As you can see, the common froth algorithm is there. There are many other short, fairly short algorithms. This is just the way of only caring about orientation of pieces and not permutation. Now the last thing I'm going to go through is the other way around. So if you care about permutation but not orientation, let's say you want to move pieces around in a sort of A perm pattern but you don't care about the orientation. Well you can use shift click here. So and then you just paint the colours as normal. So let's shift click. We select red. Let's make this one red, this one green, and that one white. So in, effectively we've moved this piece to here, but we're saying that we don't care about permutation. Sorry, we don't care about orientation, we only care about permutation. 
Now we're going to move this one uh, sorry, over to here using shift click and then that one over to here. Okay, now this looks a bit like an A-perm just with hatchings on it. That's because we've been using the shift click which tells it that we only care about the permutation. We do not care about how the pieces are oriented. So in this list, when we find the algorithms, Alright, we've got face exclusions here. So when we get these algorithms, we should be able to see, for example, a knit class. Because a knit class moves three corners round, like so. But it changes the orientation. But as we use the shift click, we don't care about the orientation. We should also see some A-perms in here. So I'm not going to look specifically. I think this one's an A-perm here. Yeah. I'm sure there are others around as well. So that's how you tell Cube Explorer that you only care about permutation and not orientation. OK, well, that's the uh, main functions that I use all covered. And there are other things on Cube Explorer, such as pattern generators, using symmetries and things. You can also scan your cube using a webcam. Well, I'm not going to go through these functions. I don't find them very useful personally. Thanks for watching. And I hope this has been useful for you and that you can find some algorithms for yourself now. Bye.